Welcome back to the Data Blitz Podcast. I'm Noel. Weston. And uh, we're here today to talk about third round of Superflex mock drafts uh, for Dynasty. We also have some kind of NFL news to go over. We've been going over rounds one, two, and three of kind of Superflex mock series. Um, this is Weston's first time joining me here, so we're going to get Weston's takes on round one, round two, you know, where I went wrong and where there's some value to be gathered up there. So, uh, better to get into it. Get into it. So, uh, for the news, we have, I think, biggest thing is going to be the Justin Jefferson contract extension. Um, alongside that, you know, pretty much two of the best players in football got paid Justin Jefferson, Christian McCaffrey. Justin Jefferson resetting the kind of wide receiver market. Sounds like we might get Tyree Kill looking for another contract. Uh, we have Jamar Chase and CeeDee Lamb coming up. And Justin Jefferson gets a fat contract. It's uh, it's going to be 144, or 140 million, 35 per year. So, and 63% of that is guaranteed. So that's pretty fucking crazy. I mean, 63% guaranteed is crazy for a wide receiver. Yeah, I, I almost guarantee, and you know, knock on wood, they doesn't, but I guarantee it tears ACL for at least one of these seasons. I always hope not, but yeah, you never know. Yeah, it's just very injury-prone position, unlike quarterback, and I mean, just <laughs> minus last year and that whole fucking debacle. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, we're going to see some guys get paid now. I think that just reset everything. Obviously, running back market's still pretty weak. Uh, Christian McCaffrey getting his contract might help that out a little bit. Um, obviously, he's kind of a freak athlete. Not everyone is at his caliber, but uh, definitely wide receiver market. Wide receivers are definitely holding a lot of value, in, especially this year. A lot of lower-level guys getting paid a lot, too. So, Yeah, uh, like Michael Pittman. Yeah. Do those other guys. Uh, Nico Gabe, Collins. Gabe Davis. Gabe, Gabe fucking Davis. Yeah. What about uh, Calvin Ridley getting a big contract too? I mean, he's 30, yeah, he's he's, he's like top fifteen in the league uh, for wide receiver yeah. contracts, ninety two million. T Higgins is going to get paid for real. Yeah, then It'll probably be around the IU range. Yeah, It'll probably be in the same same market. I don't know if he stays there, but we'll see. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to stay with the Bengals either. I think go we'll see some movement. T Higgins. Debo Samuel, Chris Godwin. I think those guys might move. Yeah. Mike Evans. I could do them both if it, if it implodes a little bit this year. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think he's set on staying in Tampa, but I mean, they, they've, already, they've had discussions with Chris Godwin about he's looking for a new contract. I think this is last year of his contract. And uh, I guess they're not making any progress. So they might move on. They might trade this year or... Just let him hit free agency next year at 29. Yeah. I mean, this is a guy that had a really solid year with Jameis. Um, won a Super Bowl somehow. But uh, I don't know. His value to me is is very up in the air. I, I can see him getting a lot on a team, you know, maybe like the Raiders or something after uh, Devontae Adams leaves, if, if that's what's going to happen there. Yeah, I think that, that could definitely work. Um, I think there's a big year for him moving back into the slot. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if he can produce. If he can, I think he might get, I mean, top value is that Calvin Ridley, Calvin Ridley contract, I think. That's going to be, I think he would try to look for that too. Yeah, if he was able to get that, that'd be crazy. That's a lot. Um, so, I don't know. I'm interested to see kind of how this all shakes out. Uh, you know, the Dolphins have to pay Tua, have to pay Tyreek. Um and then there's also talks about the Packers getting that extension done with Jordan Love uh, pretty soon. I think they said before training camp. So we'll see how that goes. And a lot of uh, market to be kind of set there. You know, we got the wide receiver market. We got the top end of that is about $35 million. Um, We got some guys are earning up closer to 30 I think T. Higgins and, and you know, IU slot in about $28. Um, Jordan Love, though, what do you think he's going to get? They might, they might reset the mark with him too. Honestly, obviously they love him in Green Bay. This is his first contract too, so I, I think they might reset the market again. Probably something maybe around Dak's contract. Um, 
so mm-hmm. I'd say at a minimum Dax contract. But I was thinking a Kyler contract would be right on pace, but I'd uh, be happy with Dak. <laughs> yeah, as a, as a Green Bay fan, right, to be happy with Dak. But I'd say I'd say around Dak, probably high end. I mean, I think he I think he would compete with Burrow's contract at at this rate. Oof, that'd be fucking tough. Yeah. I mean, at least all the wide receivers I mean, are not paying anybody else. Yeah, yeah, at least nobody's getting you know huge money on offense. Everybody's too young, so it could be done. All the, all the wide receivers are young; they're not getting any money, so they have it to spend. Hopefully, but yeah, I could just see it absolutely fucking us later on. You know, because it's not like once you give that contract a couple of years down the line, you don't have to do it again. He's going to be at fifty million plus forever, and sure, the cap's going to go up. Yeah. Won't well, maybe be as big of a percentage, but maybe it will. So, yeah, I mean, look, look at the cap goes up. I mean, everyone thought Patrick Mahomes' market's going to impact them, and look where he sits right now. He's what at ten. So, I mean, it always fluctuates. If they give him a longer contract rather than a short contract, paid a lot, I think that's their that's their yeah, best that's... bet to maybe do a a six to eight year contract. I guess an eight year contract would be awesome because then you have him locked in. So he's 33 exactly but he is only coming off one year this is his first year as a, as a full-time <laughs> that could be a brother. huge mistake <laughs> it could either, it could either oh my god or no great I, great I, great. I trust love like I don't, I don't think i have any huge concerns about him he's gonna get it done yeah. um all right let's jump into this mock draft do it so i kind of walked you through the picks that we made um and just for those of you listening you can't see uh, what I'm showing right now on my screen. Um, we'll walk through these picks, and you know, if you have any thoughts, feel free to jump out and share them. So, first pick, Caleb. Um, me, pretty obvious. You know, not much else to say there. We have Marvin Harrison coming up second. Same deal, pretty obvious. Only difference between them is positional value. Jaden uh, Daniels is coming up third. Uh, he has a huge rushing upside. And then um, it's a little bit awkward is I had Drake May fourth, but then I had the fourth pick last weekend and I took Malik Neighbors. So I don't know. <laughs> I like the rushing upside of Drake May. I think that he's a good prospect and could develop with the huge arm, has some difficulty against pressure and, and you know making decisions sometimes, but he's been successful on a team with subpar receivers. Um, I think the receivers on the Patriots are the best receivers that he's ever going to have uh, had in his career so far. I mean, Josh Downs isn't, crazy special so i don't hate him yep um i agree i agree i like the upside of, i like the upside of may yeah he fell to like eight in our draft that was fucking crazy that was so dumb or nine even yeah someone took jj mccarthy before drake may so that didn't make sense yeah he lives in minnesota um that makes sense also i don't i don't think he knows about the konami code yet he's a young end of dynasty okay um he's looking for this year (laughs) league neighbors uh up next year and odun's there back to back you know both pretty solid uh you know like a plus prospects and they're gonna come in and make a difference odun's has more target competition neighbors a little bit of a better prospect with a questionable quarterback situation yep they both have a couple question marks but good all around then you go jj mccarthy probably not even gonna start the year Going to see Sam Darnold roll out and probably have some success with Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison. You know, CJ Hawkinson comes back, you know, just one of the best kind of sets of weapons. Aaron Jones, too. JJ McCarthy is going to have a lot of success, though, when he gets the start. It's just the yeah. upside is capped by passing versus rushing ability. Um, Brock Bowers, 1 8, you know, can be flexed around depending on your tight end premium settings. Um, but this is a guy's gonna make a difference and he's a great prospect uh probably better than kyle pitts so um we're all scared a little bit yeah. because of kyle pitts you know maybe he doesn't produce right away but we just saw sam laporta come in and produce right away and brock bowers is somebody to kind of play the the blocking tight end position on his team which might actually be an advantage in the long run yeah i like i like bowers i was really excited about him coming in i think he i, I think he is better than kyle pitts i think he was a better prospect than kyle pitts he might be the best tight end prospect ever yeah i just hate where he went i hate that he went to vegas i think that was might have been one of the worst possible scenarios apparently they <laughs> flipped a coin to. it was between him yeah, and i saw uh, that 
It's just a terrible organization overall. I don't get them at all. So fucking um, stupid. They drafted Michael Mayer last year. Oh, I mean, obviously it hurts his stock, but hurts uh, Barris too. Uh, was, Maybe. I, I, I think I think just going to Vegas hurts Bowers. I think he's still going to produce. I think just not as much as he could have. Say, obviously, if he went to Cincinnati, I think that was the ideal landing spot. I like or, or New York Jets. I like the Chargers for him, but that did not end up happening. Yeah, but whatever. Uh, yeah, that speaking too. of situational landing, Xavier Worthy. <laughs> um, up next year, you got to chase the upside with this pick. That was, yeah, that was best case scenario for him as well. Um, yeah, I think I think I've had that conversation with a few people too. Xavier Worthy, I, I don't know if I love him as a player. Um, but love the situation. Uh, I think he's placed well at late in the first round because, like mm-hmm. you said, chase the upside. If it works out, it's going to be fantastic. But if it doesn't, then you just lost out on the late first. So. Yeah, if you're picking at one nine, you're probably a piece away from really being a crazy contender anyway. That piece of the wide receiver and Xavier Worthy hits, your team is set. Yes. Um Brian Thomas is kind of in a similar spot. I think his landing spot has a bit more competition. Um, but like not really. You have Hollywood, you have Rasheed Rice if he ever is gonna play football again. You have Travis Kelsey on Kansas City, and those guys are not irrelevant. Um and then you have, you know, a few guys on Jacksonville. You have Evan Ingram. You have Christian Kirk, Gabe Davis. Apparently now, for some reason, Gabe Davis. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of an equal amount of competition for them. So I like Brian Thomas. He's yeah. paired up with a young quarterback. Um, it's just if he can kind of continue to develop his route tree, um, and his separation mm-hmm. abilities, then we're gonna see a good prospect. Yeah. yeah, he has the ability to be the wide receiver one there. So for sure, we'll see how he, uh, see how he does. Um, Jonathan Brooks, you got to take your, your RB one off the board here. This is the only guy without competition. So, I mean, unless you consider Miles Sanders competition. Yeah. Highest drafted running back. I don't consider Miles Sanders any competition. He lost <laughs> the job last year. So uh, I think I, I think I like that spot for him too. And then I just hope that I um, make a little jump this year. Cause that offense was offense and offensive line was not good last year. Yeah. But they kind of shorted up and they added some weapons on the outside, added a tight end. The blocking is going to be better. The quarterback's going to have more time. And because of that, it's going to be a little bit easier on Jonathan Brooks. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think he'll get a lot of volume. So that usually translates to fantasy. Yeah. Um, hopefully it's good volume, but we'll see. I think if he's running the ball a lot, it'll be good volume. And if they're losing games by a bunch, you know, it might be some PPR volume. So I don't think that's too bad either. Exactly. Either. Um, exactly. Lad at the 112, you know, this is a guy that I could see potentially being questionable year year down the road or whatever. Uh, but right now he's looking like Justin Herbert's safety blanket, Justin Herbert's only weapon. Josh Palmer, who didn't really do too much with Herbert last year, but you know, those other guys, uh and Mike Herbert. Williams and Keenan Keenan Allen were in there, but then yeah, Justin Herbert goes down. Josh Palmer had a little bit of an injury as well, I think. So um yep. just never really had the right situation last year in my opinion to show out um and then you have quentin johnston who's i don't think gonna do too much so lad's gonna come in and, and try to make a difference right away uh, i like that pick too um i think i think a big piece that people don't talk about either is losing austin eckler he had a lot of check downs yeah i think lad might might see a good amount of those too uh just those short routes uh, right even him in the backfield for a couple out routes too but uh, fucking sick that's a that's a lot of targets to transfer over so we'll see where those go yeah um and i know they're talking about being a run first team but run first in the nfl is very different than run first in college um i think they're still gonna probably throw the ball at least 50 percent of the time so nothing to worry about there especially when you when you have herbert he's gonna be throwing it i wouldn't worry about that yeah um so that was round one and then into round two bo nix got to take uh the last kind of starting quarterback off the board here said that zach wilson has given him a tough time during otas but uh i don't know how much i believe that we've heard that before yeah we've heard that before we'll see basically it starts <laughs> game one and then and then we'll have another conversation yeah he's gonna get fucking dusted again if he starts <laughs> um 
Keon Coleman at the 2-2. This was the pick that uh, Brendan was really pushing for me to take. And uh, I think I kind of caved to him on a couple picks. This was one of them where I think I would have had Penix and Benson probably above him. But with it's it could kind of go either way. I think Keon Coleman has a decent situation. People are talking about him like he has, you know, a wide open field. Um, I don't necessarily believe that that's true. Uh, you know, we have Dalton Kincaid, you have Curtis Samuel, you have Gear. Um, Chase and, 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 yeah, Chase Claypool. <laughs> I was going to throw him in there too. Um, so a little bit of competition, nothing too crazy, but uh, I don't know how much volume is actually going to be left over for Coleman. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think that offense kind of transitioned a bit too. I think they I think Josh Allen does spread the ball out more. I think we saw that towards the end of the year with Diggs. Uh, he's yeah. not gonna just target him. He's not gonna force the ball in there. So That's good. Uh, I think for that's a safe, I think that's a safe spot for him. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Good good for the offense overall. Good for Josh Allen. Um not so much great for Keon Coleman, but I think I think that's a I think that's a good spot to draft him. Yeah, it's it's not a crazy risk and kind of a similar play. I think right around the start of the second round here is you're taking risky-ish plays that have a lot of upside uh, or low-risk guys that have you know medium upside. Coleman's kind of the latter. Uh, Penix is kind of the first guy, and same with Bo Nix. You know, these are guys that don't really have it locked in to start uh, necessarily. They, you know, are old potentially like Nix is 24 Penix might get his first start when he's 27. If uh, the, the rehab goes well for Kirk cousins, I, I don't necessarily believe that that's going to be the case. Um, I could see them moving off of Kirk pretty soon. Um, I don't know why they fucking did that, yep. but uh, you know, good, agree, good weapons. I, I agree with you there too. Yeah. I think, I think we might see Penix sooner than people think. I think it might be two years at, the maximum at this point i think he might even get a play in this year or start next year i think he might start this year and then come out because i don't know know. how fast that i think they'll let achilles recovery is gonna go yeah i mean we saw rogers he 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 did it earlier come back he did it earlier in the year but it still should be around the same timetable to be running around it's like week Um, eight for kirk but yeah, l- luckily Kirk doesn't rely too much on his mobility. We'll see how much that impacts his game. Um, but yeah, um, got Benson up next year. You know, this is a really good athlete. Uh, only issue with him is that he's stuck behind James Conner. So I like Benson a lot. So, until yeah, I like Benson too. Um, I think I think he might end up being better than Brooks yeah, for over the I career. think so yeah but but yeah situation year one is is definitely iffy with James Conner mm-hmm. and with his draft capital yeah and then uh after that we got you know kind of three athletic freak wide receivers in a row in my opinion Ricky Pearsall A.D. Mitchell and Xavier Leggett landing spots for Ricky Pearsall and A.D. Mitchell a little bit up in the air, but I think you're very high on Ad Mitchell, right? Yeah, I'm very, I'm very high on Ad Mitchell. Uh, I compared him to CD Lamb. I think, I think he's going to be this year's big receiver. Um, I think he might be a top three receiver this year for out of the rookie class. Um, I also like Leggett. I think I put Pearsall as the third best wide receiver out of those three. Mm. Um, I also like Leggett, but I, I, I'm very high on Ad Mitchell out of all of them. I'm trusting the draft capital on Pearsall um, and, you know, the hope that Debo will be traded and then Ayuk extended. That might open up some volume for Pearsall. Uh, AD Mitchell, I, I have like kind of right after that. I I don't necessarily have faith in Anthony Richardson supporting two, maybe three wide receivers. Um, you know, Josh Downs is probably going to move back to the slot fully. Um, AD Mitchell kind of playing outside alongside Michael Pittman and we'll, and we'll see how that goes. Um, But there's a lot of competition there. We we also have Jelani Woods, Jonathan Taylor to feed. So I don't know. Uh, There's going to be a lot of running in that offense. Yeah. And then you have Anthony Richardson running. Yeah, exactly. You have 
a lot of running in that offense, but I think if the offense can perform to its absolute best, I think it can support two wide receivers. So, 100%. Yeah, if it's a well oiled machine, AD Mitchell's going to be a monster. He's going to be the reason behind that as well. Yeah. So, you're high on Anthony Richardson this year then? I do like Anthony Richardson. Uh, I liked him last year. Hopefully, he can just stay away from the injuries. Yeah. Um, but uh, I do like him. If not, then you got Joe Flacco. He's going to be slinging it anyway. So. <laughs> Jelani Woods is going to cook. <laughs> so, um,. Then you have Xavier Leggett. We already talked about him. Roman Wilson. Like the situation. Don't love the player. Um, we'll see how that goes. One second. I can't hear you. Burke's pick. There you go. I can hear you. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think I like the situation there. I think his ceiling isn't super high, but I think his floor is it has a good has a good level to it. So, yeah. Um, Polk, how do you feel about him as a Patriots fan? As a Patriots fan, I should love him, but I think he's also kind of a, a ceiling floor guy. I think he has a, a pretty high floor, um, but I just don't think he's athletic enough to be the difference maker. I don't think he's going to be that fire wide receiver one that's gonna create separation so. and, and be the be drake may's like go-to guy but i think he'll i think he'll be around to make some good catches here and there yeah um you know if it works out good, for him I saw good stat. Go ahead. yeah i saw i saw a good stat for him that a lot of his receptions were first down so that seems like a big patriots guy someone that's going to just work for first downs uh, move the chains, but it's huge. Again, I don't think he's not super athletic, so I don't think he's going to be that wide receiver one that they drafted him to be. Yeah, I kind of got a little bit of the ick over him when I when I saw that Jalen McMillan kind of outperformed him, and then you know mm-hmm. falling down because of injury. But Polk just seems like he was kind of living off of the success of Penix in a way. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't love him, but the draft capital kind of speaks for itself. And at two nine, you're kind of picking between him and fourth round receivers for the most part here. You know, yeah. the gets gone, AD Mitchell, Pearsall. Uh it's third, fourth round receivers time. And uh I think Polk is a good value, especially if he's paired up with a young quarterback. If Drake May has success, Polk should be good. Yep, I agree with that. Um, then we got the back to back kind of RB three, RB four, Jalen. Right and Blake Corum. I don't like Blake Corum. Maybe pick him here. Um, I like Jalen Wright though. Yeah, I think I think Corum got the right situation. I think it fits the Ram scheme very well. Um, I've seen reports that he's struggling uh, in pass protection. I don't think he's just he's not going to be that every down back. They might throw him in there just to give. Uh, who's a running back there right now? Kyron. Yeah, Kyron. I think they might just put him in to give him a break, but I don't think he's going to be that. I don't think he'll ever be that every down back. So yeah. Happens. People love him because he's probably the best handcuff now because the Rams just abuse the shit out of their running backs. <laughs> and yeah. if if Kyron goes down, Corum, you know, has kind of the exact same build and stuff like that. But, you know, mm-hmm. I don't think he's going to get him in over Kyron. If he does, it might be another James Robinson situation where we're all saying what the fuck just happened. But uh, I don't yeah. know about that. <laughs> yeah, and I don't then, know about that either. I do like Jalen Wright, though. I think Me too. He I love is, him. I, I, I like where you placed him over Blake Corum. Um, I think Wright is Raheem Mostert's replacement, and I think he could definitely take some snaps away from both running backs there. Yeah. He's got, like, got, better, got better size, good speed. He's younger. I think that's, he's, he's like not super expensive, so if you have HN... I was kind of saying this last time, just go pick up Jalen Wright too, because then you have that whole backfield locked up and most are not expensive either. So you could throw a second and a third, grab Jalen Wright and grab Raheem Mostert. And then you're kind of have that whole backfield locked up for the next five years, uh, which is worth it in my yeah. opinion. But I know that's a, if you have cheap rosters, you can do that. If you don't, you can't. Um, Last pick, Jermaine Burton. In the second round here. I love Jermaine Burton. Yeah, I do like, 
I do like I do like Burton. I think especially like him if they do move on from Higgins. I think they will. Uh, I think that offense clearly supports two wide receivers. Um, yeah, I think I think Higgins gets moved as well. So I I do like I do like Burton here. Um, I think he's I kind of think he's kind of a a pulp kind of guy. Good floor, maybe not a surefire wide receiver one, but that's not really what Kansas, uh, Cincinnati needs. Yeah. Maybe. I think he fits it well. Yeah, if if T's gone, is he's going to move up to a first round value almost right away? Um, mm-hmm. You know, we saw some success out of him in college against good players. So let's jump into round three. Uh, that was a hell of a recap. You gave me the strength to do this. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna take Jalen McMillan. Yeah, I don't, I don't hate that. I here at three one, and mm-hmm. I just traded back in our league from I think it was like the two eight or whatever. I was thinking about Roman Wilson. I already picked him up in one league and I'm trying to kind of diversify a little bit. So I traded back to the three, four. I'm hoping McMillan's going to fall to me there. Uh, you know, barring any trade-ups from anybody on, on this podcast right now, I think I should be good. <laughs> I was going to say, I was fighting for that three, one spot. So I'll let you know if I get it, but <laughs> fucker. Um, I do like, I do like McMillan there too. I think he's the reason why I don't love Jalen Polk. Cause he too. wasn't able to beat him out. Uh, until he got injured so i think i think mcmillan's good and like we talked about earlier too uh godwin might be moving along um mike evans is old he might be having some injury issues uh, we'll see how that goes I, I like him a lot i don't think he has much competition moving forward yeah i mean i like him in spite of the competition you know like you said those guys might be out of there but mcmillan had a ton of success almost as much a success as odonze um just because he got hurt doesn't really knock him down too much for me so realistically i have him right around i mean it's tough i like jermaine burton i like roman wilson i don't like polk i don't like quorum but those guys are just kind of like value off of where they were picked Mm -hmm. so i have him kind of i guess here at 3-1 but it's tough he's a good player like yeah i I was considering him at 2-8 I mean, I didn't, like you said, I didn't love the class that was in that range. So I, I thought I might take a reach on him there, but um, I, like, I like the spot. Yeah. Um, I'm going to keep ripping crazy picks and go with Marshawn Lloyd at the 3 2 here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I like Marshawn Aaron Lloyd. Jones replacement. Yeah. And then you have Josh Jacobs with the potential out after year one. So Marshawn Lloyd could just take over this backfield. Uh, I know they like to rip two RBs. Um, Maybe AJ Dillon comes back again, but uh, Marshawn Lloyd for me just seems to be kind of the clear cut guy right now. And it's not like we're seeing a ton of value out of Blake Corum at two eleven right now, or maybe ever. Jalen Wright kind of the same deal. So I think Marshawn Lloyd's a great athlete, and he kind of has the same opportunity as them. I like it. All right, I'll, I'll pick your guy, Troy Franklin. Troy Franklin. Three three. <laughs> Yeah, I think a lot of upside, a lot of upside on on Troy Franklin. I did pick him at two eight. Um, I just liked the pairing with Bo Nix. I think they had a lot of success in college. Obviously, over two years, you always want to see the two year span. Um, he was projected to possibly be a day one pick in the NFL draft. Ended up falling very far. <laughs> I didn't, yeah, very far. I just I like the upside. I think that that's all I like. Um, good frame. I think he's what six two, six three. He's pretty fast. He's just very light. Um, I think a Devonta Smith comparison is is there. Just obviously not as skilled, uh, not as clean of a route runner. Mm-hmm. I think the hands are good, but he's also not as good of a contested catcher as Devonta Smith. So we'll see if he can if he can polish it off. I think just going in with Bo Nix gives him the advantage, and I think he just has the upside. So we'll see. Well, to me. Good. Franklin was kind of like a screen merchant in college and just got tons of his volume on short routes and kind of capitalized on that. Yep. But the landing spot keeps him very afloat for me. Um, and in that conversation, I, I, I trust the NFL a little bit here on, I think like f- fifth round. Was he a fifth round pick? Uh, fourth. Fourth. It was, it was one of one of two, right? I think it was the first. Pick of the fourth, is that right? Okay, that's not, not too far back. It but was early, early fourth, early fourth. Yeah, I trust them on that process, but you know, pairing him up with Knicks, and 
I don't know like how I don't know how many historical guys that we've had pair up with their college quarterback right off the bat. Um, I don't think it happens too often. And Mark Chase and Joe Burrow. Yeah. So later. basically, Troy Franklin's going to be. <laughs> no, it's just like you can't compare it. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. We'll see how it kind of turns out. But I, I think he's a decent value. He, Nix is going to look his way. Cortland Sutton might be out of there. Um, Marvin Mims might be the guy to kind of keep an eye on to take his volume. Um, it's tough here, but I think I'm going to rip tight end two with Ben Sinat. Tight end. Um, kind of running out of value at running back specifically. Um, you know, there's still some dart throws that are easy to make, but I think, uh, Ben is a crazy athlete. You're going to see the whole floor of that offense get lifted up by Jaden Daniels. Um, I don't know who Jaden Daniels is necessarily going to target. He seemed to be a wide receiver guy, um, typically in college, but uh, maybe the tight end gets some volume. They picked this guy for a reason, and I, I think I like him here. I like the value there. It's third round tight end. That works for me. Why did I? Why did I get a notification that it was my turn to pick in a league when it's the three one and I have the three four? Got a notification for it. Yeah, it said it's your turn to pick, and I looked at it. It's just not. It's weird. I have to distract you, gotta, you until you gotta, he makes that pick. You gotta adjust the uh, the timer on these. I do. I'll do that real quick. Um, but I'm gonna rip the three five. And then you tell me why it's a good idea or a bad idea. Oof. Okay. I'd actually take another Jets player here at 3-5. I would go Brandon no Allen. No way. Over I'm, I'm a Wisconsin um, guy, but, too. But I think uh, Corley, I, I was high on him when he was drafted. I liked the situation. I like the player. Um. He just seems like a screen merchant to me. I know you said Troy Franklin, screen merchant, but he's he's gonna get the the <laughs> Yeah, I like it. I don't know. Uh, it's a good situation. I think he's just an athletic guy. Hope uh, I think upside is Debo Samuel. I think that's obviously the role I think they want to use for him. I don't think he's a, a polished route runner. He's not going to be running on the outside. I think he's a short. How tall is he? He's shorter. I think he's like six one. Is he he's big? Five eleven. 5'11", 215. He's built like a running back, I think. Yeah. Um, I think they'll use him as a versatile player. I think the volume might be there in that offense, but get to see it, especially with Brees Hall, who, who's such a good pass catcher. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. I'm kind of drinking the Kool-Aid on his yards after the catch ability, but you're kind of right. It is a lot of screen work. I think there's some a lot of competition actually at wide receiver. Now that they brought in Mike Williams, they have Alan Lazard, they have Garrett Wilson. Um, yeah. But I think Corley can kind of maybe be the next phase. Maybe take a few Time notes, you know, wall. yeah. Take a few notes from the guys that are there right now in a year, maybe two Aaron Rodgers is not going to be there anymore. They're going to have a new quarterback. They're going to have Garrett Wilson still, but Corley could be the kind of yeah. second guy there. Um, so we'll see kind of how that works out and, and where that volume goes. Okay. Um God, I want to do something so go dumb. Baker here? What's that? What were you thinking? Would you go Baker here? What can I do something dumb? Yeah, pick it. <laughs> I love Spencer Probably. Rattler. I just think you have to take the quarterback I, value here. I do don't you? I don't hate that, especially being super flex. I, I like that pick. I drafted him in, in the other dynasty league. That's not super flex. I drafted him in the fourth round. I got Bo Nix um, to pick before you, I think. Did you? Yeah, I think. I got Bo Nix in the fourth yeah. round. Yeah, non super flex, obviously. Uh, I was going to pick Nix there. I was hoping he would fall, but I, I, I was happy with Rattler. I think situation's good. I'm not sure how much patience they have with Carr. I think Carr ended the year well, but if he struggles this year I, and Rattler's playing all right, I. I I wouldn't be opposed to them throwing him in there and just getting a higher draft pick, letting him play, see how it goes. 
Yeah, I fuck with it. And, you know, I keep kind of pounding the table. Rattler played a pro style offense. He was, you know, projected to win the Heisman number one college or high school quarterback coming into the college. Got replaced by no other than Caleb Williams. Um, yeah. It's not like it was totally his fault. You know, he kind of let his ego go to his head. He's kind of a fucking idiot for a little bit uh, in high school, especially, I think, for what was it, QB1. Um, mm-hmm. But Rattler kind of shaped up. He shut up. And he kind of started to learn pro ball after his time at Oklahoma. So I'm hoping that he can have some success because of that. Um, you know, he kind of made Xavier Leggett last year. Um, so I'm hoping that yeah, I agree. that might translate. Uh, people keep saying Carr has, you know, two years where the Saints are locked into his deal. Um, we've seen teams move off quarterbacks deals where they just don't give a fuck. Uh, yeah. You know, with, with Russ. So like, Rattler could be the guy, and I think he might get a shot. Um, they're looking for the answer at quarterback as their cap situation goes into complete shit with uh, Alvin Kamara and fucking Derek Carr, and they're going to have to re-sign Olave, I think, soon. I think they still owe Michael Thomas money. <laughs> so, That's yeah, crazy. They're, they're, they've always struggled with cap, so we'll see how they, how they handle the Carr situation. Okay. Um... This is where it gets tough for me because I'm very between Baker and Luke McCaffrey. I think I'm going to go with Baker yep. just because of the target volume. You have, you know, Demario Douglas, you have Jalen Polk, you have fucking Juju, um, Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry's still a Patriot, right? Yes. Um, Taking some volume, but, you know, there's a chance for anybody to be the wide receiver one. Baker's apparently looked good in OTAs, I believe. Um, drawing some praise from Jacoby Brissett. And uh, I don't know. I think there's a chance that he's solid. We saw him struggle at Alabama and then move to UCF. So I have some concerns about you know the legitimacy of his college career stats and stuff like that. But uh, you know, he's a dude that showed that he could ball at UCF. It's just can he do it at a high level? Yeah, I really like I really like this guy. Again, quote of the year. What did he say? His game's so good, he makes people in wheelchairs stand up for him. Like I think he said something like that. Um, like this guy, I think he's. I think he might be better than Polk. Might come in and be be better. Um, I think he's a good route runner, good body control, good hands. So inexperienced, but. I like the upside for him, so I definitely I would be happy getting him in the third round. Yeah, for the third round, that's not bad. Um, mm-hmm. Take the upside on that pick. It could sure. work out in a big time way. Uh, I'm gonna rip Luke McCaffrey now. I can do it. Oh, uh, Luke McCaffrey's a great athlete, dude. Can absolutely ball. So I'm fine taking him here. You know, he's probably gonna have to climb over Jahan Dotson on the depth chart. I don't know if that happens, but if it does, there's gonna be plenty of volume for him. Um, so I like the pick here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good pick. What's he? One year wide receiver. He's a quarterback transition, right? So yeah, usually a little Edelman esque, good yeah. athlete, smart like a quarterback. Like just one translates. year at Rice. How long was he at Rice? I think he's. I think he's only one year wide receiver. Yeah, whatever. He's Christian McCaffrey's brother. You gotta take him. It's free. Yeah, exactly. You might be able to trick somebody on a trade. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll give you McCaffrey. I'll give you McCaffrey, bro. Okay, gets harder again. That's a teardrop right there for me, big time. Yep, like the biggest teardrop, I think. Uh, you know, besides like your one three, one two. See if I can't tell you, then it's not a teardrop. Yeah. All right, are, I'll take. These are just you're you're going for. Yeah, I'd go. I was gonna say I'd go Braylon Allen. Yeah, I'm gonna take Braylon Allen for, for backup running backs here. Hopefully, someone gets injured and then you you strike on a starting one, up. running back. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's what you're reaching for here. Unless you find some Puka Nakua or someone like that, that's gonna be good. But I don't see anybody else being in there. Yeah, Braylon Allen was awesome in college. You know, he came in at 17, played a good three years. He's 20 now, uh, going into the NFL. So Dude's young as fuck. He's going to be on his second contract yeah. when he's 24. He's I have no idea. Yeah, I have no idea how that's going to work out for him. But he's a baller. He was really good. He just lacks that kind of top-end speed. 
which is a big concern why he fell in the draft. If he did not lack the top end speed, he would have been RB1, RB2 off the board. So um, that's just the big trait that he's missing. It's a big trait to be missing. Some guys are built on it, like HN. Some guys, uh, I don't know. I can't really name that many players that don't have it at running back and are successful. But uh, mm-hmm. I think Allen might get a chance if Brees goes down, and Brees has gone down a couple times. So I was gonna say, I was gonna say, if you have Brees Hall, I think you have to take Braylon Allen in the third round, uh, especially if you're if you're later third round, like you said, the big drop off there. I think you have to take him. Especially yeah, the Brees Hall owner. Do you think this tier from 2-8 to 3-8 is like an entire tier? Or is that a ridiculous take? Two, eight. I, almost maybe 2-8 to 3-3, three, 3-4. Three, three, yeah, I think I think that's the block. Um, I think it's traded to 3-4, motherfucker. I mean, you, can, you, can make an, you can make an argument to even go to Rattler. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to take Rattler if I end up with him and nobody else. Yeah, I think that's... Um... I think that's the, the tier. Well, actually, now I can't. I, I think it's I think it's such a big fall off, and then those guys are all kind of like you're you're grasping for high end. Yeah, Sanat and Jatavian Sanders went at the end of our second round here, so I'm gonna be able to grab. 11, 2, 2, Wilson, Wright, Burton, or Lloyd, or McMillan, or Rattler. So I'm actually fucking set. Three, yeah, that, was, that was a good trade for you for sure. Love it. Um, I'll rip Tavian Sanders. Why not? You know, the dude's pretty good. He's gonna have plenty of volume. Um, in Carolina, if it, if it comes his way, still don't know what the target pecking order is gonna be between Deontay Johnson, Adam Thielen, if he's still even alive, Xavier Leggett, <laughs> uh, you know, Tommy Tremble, Jonathan Brooks. Tavian Sanders. Uh, there's a lot of guys there that are good. I think yeah. I think Jatavian Sanders comes in right over Tommy Tremble right yeah. away though. Yeah, if if Sanders can end up being tight end one, I think the volume's there. I think young uh, quarterbacks obviously like a tight end. Uh, so if he if he can win the tight end one job, I think I think the volume's there regardless of who the wide receivers are. Yeah. Um. On to the three eleven. Stays tough. Uh, I think I'm going to go for a running back. It's just a matter of which, because there's like five guys in the same running back tier for me here. You know, you got Kamani Vidal. He's good. I, I think Estime is good. I don't like Bucky Irving. I like Ray Davis a, a decent amount, but I think, you know, who has a chance to actually take over their backfield? For me, it's Tyrone Tracy. Estime and Vidal. So I think Vidal might have the edge. Yeah. Because he doesn't have Javante in front of him. And Javante's actually sneaky value these days. You know, coming back off of that ACL, struggled with momentum and you know. Hopefully fully healthy move, going but... into the year. So all right, Vidal. So this dude has a shot, you know. Uh, they came. Greg Roman came over to uh, Chargers, bringing Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins. So one of those guys is going to get the start. Uh, probably Gus Edwards off the bat, but Gus Edwards is twenty nine. You know, he's had a couple injuries here and there throughout his career. Actually, I feel like more than a couple. He's kind of injury prone, sneaky. Um, J.K. Dobbins coming off of that torn Achilles is probably. You know, somebody here has interest in J.K. Dobbins. Is going to trade me J.K. Dobbins for the three twelve? So, uh, I won't talk too much shit on J.K. Dobbins here, but I, I think he, uh, you know, he has the upside well, if if he can come back. Yeah, but he. Yeah, uh, we've seen it. We've seen it before with James Conner. I don't know if the explosiveness is still there after an Achilles, especially one year removed. Um, James Conner tore yeah, his Achilles. I don't, I don't know. No, uh, James Robinson. Oh, did I say James Conner. Yeah, you did. Sorry about that. Yeah, I was like, holy fuck, dude. J.K. Dobbins is back. <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah. James, James Robinson. We, we all saw how that went. So, And then uh, Cam Akers. So... Cam Akers, yeah, exactly. He, he was 
He was a like first round draft pick. People were drafting him way too high. So yeah, sneaky. Um, Isaiah Spiller has a chance over Vidal here to take over this backfield. But I don't think so. I think it's so. it's anyone's backfield. I mean, we, we might yeah, it's anyone's backfield. We might even see a James Robinson situation, another Austin Eckler situation. Some undrafted guy comes in and plays well. Yeah, how that's going to play out, but they might. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a backfield by committee too. I don't think there's going to be one guy. Mm-hmm. Take over. Okay. Last pick. I think I want to go with Tyron Tracy. Go oh, Brendan Rice. I don't like Ben Brendan Rice. You. I don't hate him. I think he's a good route runner. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of risk there as well. I mean, I don't. Uh, I don't know if uh, there's probably like one of one of Vidal, Bucky Irving, Estime, Ray Davis, uh, Tyrone Tracy, Dylan Lobb, Rasheen Ali. Are going to be a good value, but I don't know who it is, and I don't feel like taking the swing on it. So I am going to go with Red Rice here. Right. There you go. Yeah, yeah. wide receiver core obviously up in the air. I, I don't mind that pick. I think maybe he beats out one like Josh Palmer. I don't see it happening, but he might might be able to carve out a role for himself. A couple injuries here and there. Who knows? Yeah. Um, he has the name for it. We'll see. If he gets it done, it's going to be a huge value swing. So, and I feel like unlike, you know, if if it's one of the, I'm just talking from a pure value perspective. Like, if it's Brendan Rice and he gets it done, he's probably gonna jump up to a late first in value, maybe early second. But if it's fucking Tyrone Tracy and he gets it done and he has a really great season, mid to late second. So your upside is higher with Brendan Rice. And I think you're also getting a kind of higher floor as well. And the value is a little bit more insulated than a running back who comes in and just never really gets a snap and does nothing. I agree. So there's your round three. Um, Thanks Weston for joining me here. Yeah, of course. It was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Football talk is fun. I think that's some good picks Found some good value in there. Yeah, uh, who's your, at this point, I think I'm, I'm going to be able to guess your best pick and worst pick of the draft. Uh, I think your best pick would be A.D. Mitchell at the 2-6. And worst pick would be tough, actually. Yeah. When I think there's obviously just that fall off after Bowers. I think Xavier Worthy could be the worst pick if he just absolutely flops. Yeah. Um, you're taking someone in the first round and then you don't get anything out of them. I think that's any of those, yeah, any of those middle guys. He'll be a little bit value flop. insulated. Not, that's, a, that's, a high, that's a high pick to flop. I don't know if Odonce is going to flop, but maybe right off the bat and you grab him next year. But uh, I think he's the CD Lamb situation. Like, from situation perspective. He's going to be behind two great receivers for the first, you know, year or two. Maybe have wide receiver two numbers and then pop off after that. Take off. Okay, I like I like that comparison. But yeah. yeah. All right. So that's round three. Um, I'm on vacation next week, so no podcast next week. But uh, I'll be back and I'll come in swinging with some new content after that. So go pick up Spencer Rattler. <laughs> yeah, we'll figure out what it is. Alright, thanks everyone.